In this video we are looking at a binary search. In particular we are going to understand what it does and understand why it's such an awesome search to do. So let's get going. So like any search we have a list. Okay, we have a list and imagine that we are searching for lime in amongst our fruit salad. So what we do is we look at the we find out the middle what the middle item is, in which case it's lemon, and we compare lime to lemon. And we know alphabetically that lime comes after lemon in the alphabet. At least it did when I last checked, because I is more than E in the alphabet. So what we do is we then just look at this part of the list. Right, and then we look at the middle item here. And well there's not a middle item because we can't search for item one point it's not like Harry Potter where we can go to station and whatever it is in three quarters, right? So what we do is we round down. So the middle item for these two would actually be lime. So we compare lime with lime and hurrah! Lime is indeed in the list. So uh, what can you tell me about the order of items in this list? Right, it's alphabetical. For this to work it's got to be in alphabetical order or numeric order if it's a bunch of numbers, right? Let's just have a look at this again, but this time let's look for, let's imagine we're a minion and we're after our banana. So here is our list. Uh, we look at the middle item, lemon. We compare lemon to banana. Banana is less than lemon, so our new list becomes these two. We look at the middle item, we remember that we need to round down, in which case we compare apple with banana. Banana is more than apple. This then is the new part of the list that we're looking at. There's only one item left. Is banana equal to banana? Hurrah! We've found our banana. Minion's happy. We all live happily ever after. What if we are looking for kiwi? Kiwi's obviously not in the list, but the computer doesn't know that. So we search, we compare kiwi with lemon. We know that K becomes before L in the alphabet, so our new list that we're looking at becomes these two. Hopefully getting the idea. We compare kiwi with apple. Kiwi is more than apple. We're just left with banana. And we compare banana with kiwi. Uh, of course, that's that's going to be more than B. Uh, but um, there's nothing left in our list to look at. So obviously, kiwi is not there. That's how it works, and it's incredibly fast because of the size of the problem. Just divides by two every time we do a comparison. So even if you started off with 26 million records, I think you only need to do 10 comparisons or something. You, you can check that. I might be lying, but it's not very many. So, let's run this line by line. F8, F8. So this is implemented using VBA, because it's about as close to pseudocode as you're going to get, and we're going to step through one line at a time. So this is a great way of understanding the code and checking that everything does what it's supposed to do. So, F8, let's run this again. What do we want to search for? What were we searching for? We were searching for originally Lime, so let's give that a go. Okay, we define our search list. And what we need is we need a left index, a right in, and a right index. So left index starts off as 0, right index will start off as 4. Because 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, we want to search between item 0 and item 4. And we set item found to false because we have not yet found our item. Now you might be looking at U-bound and thinking, what on earth's going on there? U-bound stands for upper bound, it's a VBA thing. If you were, you were writing this in pseudocode, you would probably use the length, okay, the length of the list, minus one. But anyway, the principle is important here. So left index is zero, right index is four, because we search it between item zero and four, and we set item found to false. So our two conditions for searching through is we need to make sure that we haven't yet found the item, and we haven't exhausted the, the list. We'll know if the list is exhausted because the left uh, index will become more than the right index. And hopefully you'll see that happening uh, a little bit later on. But uh, just understand that we continue to search when we haven't found the item and we haven't exhausted the list. Hopefully it makes sense. The next job is to find the middle index. And we do that by adding the left index to the right index and divided by 2. Right, and then int will make sure that we round down. So, um, for example, if we're searching between items 5 and 10 in the list, we add 5 and 10, 15, divide by 2, 7.5, round down, 7. Sometimes you might see the word floor written in here, F-L-O-O-R, which always rounds down. 
but we can also use int, which is probably more common at uh, GCSE level to see this. And VBA doesn't support floor anyway, hence why I've used int. So uh, let's me show you that. So if I do debug.prints, um, say we did um, int of 5.5, all right, and 5. Okay, so this always rounds down. This is how. This is what int does. Okay, it converts a real number or float number, or it, or it could even be a string actually, and um, it will convert it into its integer representation, rounded down very nicely. So now we've found the middle, which is two because zero one two. This is the middle item. We can now start on our comparisons. So search list two lemon. Okay, search list two lemon. Is that less than lime? Indeed, lemon is less than lime. So, what is it going to do? It's going to update the left index. What is it going to update the left index to? Well, the middle index plus one, because next time round we just want to focus on these two, don't we? So we do that, and uh, then that obviously finishes with the if construct here, and then we are at the end of our loop here. In pseudocode, this will probably be end while, and uh, because it's a loop, where are we going to go to next? Yeah, back here, have we found the item? No. Is the left index still less than the right index? Uh, less than or equal to the right index, rather. It is. So we go again. We look at the middle item. Uh, well, we find out the middle uh, index again. So uh, we're looking at these two. So what's the middle between 3 and 4? It happens to be 3, because we're rounding down. Is So search list 3, lime. Is lime equal to lime? It's is equal to, it's not less than, it's not more than, which means it must be equal to, which means that lime is indeed in the list. Hurrah, we found it. So we set item found to true, and then the next time it looks at this condition, well this condition here is no longer met, because item found is now true. So that means the loop is going to end. And item found is true, so it's not going to do this, and then we've finished the algorithm. Hopefully you haven't fallen asleep. Let's do this again, but look for banana. Right, I'll do this a bit quicker this time. Right, what do you want to search for? Banana. Banana. Define our search list. Left index, right index. Define those two items found. For, um, set that to false. These conditions hold true. So we search for the middle index, which is do. Uh, the middle index is, is lemon. Is that less than the keyword? No, it's not. Is it more than the keyword? It is. So this time we're updating the right index. The right index becomes 1. So we go again. So this time we're searching between item 0 and 1, these two here. Okay. We look at the, we find the middle item, which is going to be uh, index 0. Is, uh, is this true? Is apple less than banana? It is. So we update the left index and then we go again. We find the middle item. Remember, we're now just going to be left with this. Is banana less than banana? No. Is banana more than banana? No, which means it must be equal to. So banana is indeed in the list. And we found the item. So that the next time it gets to here, this, item, this condition is not going to be met, which means that we're all done. Okay, one more. Let's search for Kiwi. Let's see what happens when the, we search for an item that's not in the list. Define our search list. Left, right, item found, etc. So, we go through. Let's just run this a few times. Okay. Search for the middle item 1, right? So we're just left with this in our list now. So, is banana less than Kiwi? It is. So our left index now becomes 2, okay, because it's going to update it to this plus 1. But remember, our right index is 1. Alright, so now our left index is more than our right index, so this condition does not hold as being true. So that means we quit our function. The item hasn't been found, so it says Kiwi has not been found. And that, folks, is a binary search. So hopefully understanding generally how it works, that's the easy bit. Getting your head around the algorithm might take um, a little bit longer, but stick with it. See if you can write it for yourself. Maybe have a go in, in Pascal or Python or programming language of your choice. Running it through line by line 
until you understand what it does. And once you've done that, you will be amazing. Not that you're not amazing in a way, but just, just have a go. See if you can uh, fully understand this and appreciate why it's so incredibly fast. Because it halves the size of the problem every time. But remember for it to work that your items must be in alphabetical order. Okay, good luck.